Perfectly timed. Uh, and you were listening to Jazz Social 7. Um, that was... I chose that because it has two people that are playing next week, which is Tim Jago and Troy Roberts um, doing a set. Also next week is Steve Grant um, playing, I think, a Wurlitzer piano. Um, and Raphael Carlin. Um, so tune in for that one, of course. Um, I should also just thank, before we start, Angie West, who works with me on the Jazz Social and does all the things that I can't do. Um, so thanks, Angie, for your hard work. Um, but we've got a really exciting uh, night of music um, for you. And I'm a little nervous, actually. Um, it's a pretty intimidating crowd. No, they're not. They're, they're lovely. And uh, first off the blocks, um, well, tonight we have Stephen Magnuson Trio, we have Lee Carriage and Steve Russell, and we have Bruni Island with Scott Tinkler and Julia Schwing. But first off the blocks, Steve Magnuson Trio, are you in the house, Stephen? Hi. Hello. Dave Beck on the drums. Frank Desario on the bass. Frank Desario on bass. I'm just relaying it because I'm sure we'll hear you when you start to play. Thanks, Stephen. I'll I'll hand it over to you.
<laughs> uh, thank you. That was uh, that was a phenomenal pleasure to hear you guys playing. Um, yeah, really a thrill. Um, and you know, almost like an actual gig. Like I felt like I was there. Um, all right. I think next we're we're going from Melbourne. We're leaving Melbourne. We're crossing over. Lismore? Somewhere near Lismore? Byron Bay. Byron Bay. Hi, Lee. Hi, Hi. Steve. Hey, How are you going? That was beautiful, wasn't it? Oh, mind-blowing. Oh. So great. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to get out of your hair and I'll leave you to it. I'll see you at the end. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Two covers, two originals. We won't talk, we'll just play music.
like I loved you. Silent tears and roses, photographs of poses, pieces of.
this tune um so uh, it's fresh it's beautifully fresh it's called light turned up it's from my big brother
<laughs> wow, Lee Carriage and Steve Russell, thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Thanks for having us in your lounge room. Uh, we'll catch up shortly, but I, we're going somewhere entirely different now to off the coast of Tasmania. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> By <laughs> Scott and Julius, are, are you there? Yes. Excellent. And you had the audacity to to declare yourselves the band of Bruni Island and call yourselves Bruni Island. I, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. We're just Wasn't, from Bruni Island. Isn't that what you're called? No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what your band was called. No, no, we don't have a name for a band. We're just a couple of blokes playing a couple of tunes. All right, then. Okay. Let's hear it. Thank you. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> that was so much fun. Uh, I might give you a, a chance to rearrange your mic and stuff and see if uh, Steve and Lee and Steven are still there. Oh, they've slipped off down the pub. Ah, oh, Stephen, you're here. <laughs> beautiful guys. Yeah. It's so refreshing to hear, I don't know, improvised interactive music making again. Stunning. Um, you look like you were having fun, Stephen. Yeah, fantastic. There were some people in the chat uh, wondering about your set list. Um, do you remember what you play? I know you did two two on it tunes. Yeah, we did a we did. I can't remember what the first tune was. Turn around. Is that off a particular album? I'm trying to plug for you here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, uh, some amazing music making and also different as well. Steve and Lee, you sound so great. But then when we're talking, I don't know if I can hear you. Can you give us a, Hello? a good day? Oh, I can. Yeah. But we were talking this afternoon. You said, you know, you've just gotten off Zoom teaching all day. But it's kind of the life of the teaching musician at the moment, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. It's hours hi, and hours a week. <laughs> ah, hi, Frank. They go get headphones off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because everyone's saying it's particularly draining. So you know, it yeah. means even more that you would choose to spend your free time with us here on Zoom again. Oh, this is different. wonderful difference. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely um, to see everybody. Yeah. I I was wondering, is it, um, I don't know, anyone can answer. You don't have to take it in turns. Is it, are you thinking of new projects in this time? Like now that we've been in this lockdown for a while, is it stimulating creatively? Um, well, we had, a, I had a project I was writing um, and one of those tunes, um, I had this, idea about reverberating biological uh, this idea that we were Steve and I were at now I think in a week's time we were meant to be going to Europe um, to Oslo to Rainbow Studios and we were going to record all new work there um, for that project and um, so even though yeah it's, there's certainly some bit been uh, some other things bubbling up from similar sort of similar body of work for me anyway You've been strapped online. I've been strapped. I, at the beginning, before the lockdown, I started this like this semester with the largest teaching load I've ever had, like 20 hours a week, and and then we got locked down. And that 20 hours just became the week, pretty much. You know, for the first month, I just worked all all the time, and then I've sort of worked it out now. And I'm, yeah. I'm back to like four and a half days, maybe. Yeah. So that sort of. I wasn't very creative. Did we hear some new material tonight? Was that a Daniel John's tune? Yeah, I, yeah, I chose one of Daniel's because it was about it was. Right. I was having a pun on, on being long distance long relationships. relationships and being online and it was a bit of a dare from a, a student. Um, 
I heard it and and thought it sounded vaguely familiar and Googled the lyric. That's how I know. I haven't. Uh, <laughs> it was great to hear um, the Bruny Island mob. Uh, Tink, that was great. Yeah. Yeah. How did you come to be, how did the two of you come to be there, Scott? <laughs> Did you know that before you moved there, though? That I lived here? No. Um, well, I, I met Julius because I came down for some mofo gigs in Hobart. And so I um, travelled to Bruni Island and met up with Julius and started falling in love with the place. And um, then Veronica and I decided to get out of the city because we needed the kids to leave home. The only way of getting out was to leave leave Melbourne, kick him out, and um, we, we started looking around and we moved down to um, Bruny Island, of all places. And, um, so isolation for us has actually been a lot longer than a couple of months in a way, because uh, moving down here, it sort of felt a lot like that anyway, which is, I say, in a really positive way. I, I actually really like it. And um, in a strange way, other than having close friends and family, is that the island is as quiet as it's been since I've lived here, and Julius reckons it's sort of like what it used to be back in the old days, you know, there's no tourists, the, the car, the road's really quiet, there's no joy flights of aeroplanes, and it's actually, it's beautiful here, even more beautiful because it's so quiet. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sort of really busy. You were asking about new projects while there was lockdown and stuff, and I actually find it sort of strangely um, creatively inspiring to be locked down and sort of hidden away and just have to, you have to question a little bit what music is to you and why you do it, and um, it's sort of nice to realise again that I, I do it just because I, I like playing music, not because I like doing gigs. <laughs> or, yeah. yeah, well, I was talking to people that were on last week about whether they kind of considered music a social or improvising a social activity or whether it was like, you know, they thought about music in sort of solitary terms. Um, but you, I mean, you're, you're inspired by being alone and isolated like that, or do you, do you practice together all the time? Uh, we practice a lot together. You and I get together at least a couple of times a week. Um, but, you know, I, I admit I do. I miss the trips to Melbourne, you know, because um, every couple of two or three months I go to Melbourne and play with Steve and with uh, Magnuson and uh, you know Glenn Walters and Eki Beltran and great mates down there that I play with. And I do miss that immediacy of playing, but I know that it, that's going to happen again soon at some point. Instead of three, instead of it being two months or three months, it'll be six months. You know, it's, it's just a little bit more time. But um, I, uh, I, I like the challenge of sitting in a room and trying to come up with ideas that don't bore the absolute hell out of myself. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? that's part of the challenge is, is keeping yourself interested in music. And how, how, do you, how do you do that without boring the shit out of yourself? You know? <laughs> how do you do it? Tell us. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, it's a constant challenge, isn't it? I mean, we, we listen to ourselves play and we know what we've played and we go, oh, I always play. Well, you you seem to constantly find new areas of performance to move into, but you've also like from the first time that I heard you play, which must have been I don't know, tw almost thirty years ago. You've always sounded like Scott. Well, I, I think sometimes um, your limitations make you sound like what you sound like. <laughs> So you've got to make you've got to make the best out of what you've got. Mm. You know, so r rather than try to hide your weaknesses, it's better to flaunt them. And then you sound like you're Scott. Cool. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I did tonight. And it's funny you spend I think the first twenty years or fifteen years of your life musically trying to sound like everyone else, and then you realise that. It's not going to happen. But you've picked up a lot of stuff along the way, you know, that kind of 
inspires you and you but you sound like you because you are restricted by what you can do <laughs> that's all it mm. is you know mm. you didn't sound like you're restricted by much tonight <laughs> to be honest everybody's restricted oh, you know when you start because i've been practicing we've all been practicing a lot i feel so much worse because i've been practicing all the time right <laughs> it's getting worse <laughs> you do feel like that sometimes though I but you've been practicing a lot during the shutdown all the time yeah right because i know some people haven't no I th yeah i'm sure but but i for me the first week was so kind of disruptive that i had to stop drinking and then just get up at 5 30 and start practicing yeah that's inspiring yeah like scott scott gets up at the crack of dawn as well yep i'm with stevie The pra your practice, it's your practice. It's what it's the way you live your life, I reckon. So yeah. you know, that's the way I feel like it's um, part of my ritual. It's like doing a morning poo. I've got to, I've got to practice yeah. <laughs> certain functions that need to be taken care of. <laughs> uh, and uh, can I ask a big question? Because I, I don't know, I was asking musicians about this last week and I think it's interesting. What do you think about when you improvise? And do you aspire to be kind of conscious and analytical while you're playing or to forget everything and just be completely going with the flow? Do you have a position on this? Come on, Frank. Go on, Go on Steve. You look like you want to say something. No, I was saying Frank. Frank. Oh, I was saying Steve Russell. Oh, Steve Russell. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Frank. Go for it. You'd have to define what actually qualifies as thinking, because I'm deaf. My brain is definitely doing something, but it's hard to def necessarily call it thinking. It's just like imagining a melody and making sure that, that my fingers can get to it. Um, you know. Imagining it's not, stuff. Not like the awareness of what. If I find myself going, oh, this is a nice chord I can play this scale on, I'm usually like missing it somehow you know, while I'm th if I'm thinking that way. So, yeah, it's not like, not like any other sort of thinking. No, oh, Frank, you were going to say something too. Um, I was going to say that, uh, I, unfortunately, I can't remember who, who, who said this, but I, I was watching someone give a masterclass and they said something about uh, learning to um, become an ear player again, and what they were saying was, you, you know, when you start playing, you play, you, you know, you're using your ears, and then if you get into some sort of uh, intellectual uh, study, you start to learn about scales, blah 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 blah, and then sometimes you get absorbed with that. And this person was making the note that, making the point that you know, you have to, you have to forget about all that and and learn to become an ear player. Again, so for me, I, 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 I'm, I'm just trying to um, play what I hear, um, uh, you know, and you know, it's a bit of a. Sometimes it comes off, and sometimes it doesn't. But that's kind of what I'm trying to do, you know. I can identify with that. Mm. Yeah, totally. A kind of moving from an intellectual process to it being something that's kind of in your body. As you play it is a tactile thing though isn't it i mean you are spending all of this time reviewing some physical things it's a physical thing so yeah. those things are part of and they are whether they are formed in the shape of phrases that you go towards or because your body sort of that you know, has spent so many years doing these things. And you spend a lot of time, I think, trying to break all of that up as well. But as soon as you're in a conversation with your friends, in a musical conversation, you react to them a certain way because that's how we speak to each other as human beings. You answer each other's phrases, you cut each other off, you slip on something, someone grabs you and finishes your thing for you. I mean, it's sort of similar to those things and it and it's different with everyone else because if you talk to play with someone else you don't have that so then you spend a bit of time finding it you know like playing with 
playing with Scott, for instance, is has there's a different dialogue that goes on, and when you play with Scott and Eki and Eki Veltheim, the way their their language has a particular way of resolving, doing what it does. So you're always kind of constantly giving and taking and it depends you know and I think for someone like yourself Frank being a bass player where you working with different people all the time you've got to do that you know and then if you're in a working in a in a working band it's sort of doing its thing that's what it does you know I mean I, I don't know I mean that's how I kind of deal with it but thinking is a bizarre thing because like what Steve said we all have to we all have to think <laughs> just how do you think but I like what you said that the body knows in a sense, like you train the body and it knows. It's part what of it, isn't it? No. Yeah. Because as Scott said, we're restricted because we're in this form, you yeah. know, and that's part of it, you know. I think the moderator um, is moderating, but Bruni Island wanted to speak. Yeah, you were to say something. And then I had something. Yeah, I was going to, I had something to say and then Steve said it, but... Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I think, see it was very physically. I, I use it. It's a big mess of um, stuff, but there's a lot of physical impulse involved that then slingshots towards something that the ear reacts to. And that sort of comes from the other person too. So I sort of see it as reacting to my physical impulses. So the body kind of dictates more than the mind or the ear even. Yeah, I think, I think like maybe it was Derek Bailey talked about that. Like sometimes it's just a movement that your body does and then you hear it and then you've got to respond to it in some way. I mean, that's not like the gospel. But that's no. Like Scott, you haven't told us what you think or think about. Well, Lee was going to go next. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just um, look. I think as I've got older, um, it's all for me. It's been about holding time with the feeling that I started the tune with, and trying not to get in my own way. So just just trying to actually be present, which see, would be seemingly simple thing, but it's still a real task for me to be very. 100% present and I catch myself. It's like bad meditation for me, you know, trying to solo or I'm, I feel like I'm soloing in the melody anyway of the head of the tune or wherever I am. But mainly I, I'm trying to remember feelings and then I'm trying to match the feelings with the sound that I'm making and I'm trying just to respond to the last sound that I made and the sounds around me from the last sound and I'm trying, yeah, keep the thread and just not get too <laughs> up my own whatever about anything, just literally response to response, moment to moment, and trying to, that's, that's been my process. Yeah, that's really cool. I would go along with everything that's been said. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you, you can't not think. If you're not thinking, you're dead. I mean, we, our mind thinks when we're asleep. You can't not think. So, I mean, we're, we're always thinking, but um, it, it's like uh, Lee was saying about the meditative thing. It, it's the constant struggle. You try to be focused, but then you go off and you'll find other thoughts coming into your mind. And you'll be, you could be thinking about the gardening or the walk you've done on the beach or something else, but you're still playing. And so there's different levels to the thought process I think one of the going on. We'll be thinking about all sorts of things that are totally unrelated to the music and still be playing music. And often that affects your judgment of what has happened, but not necessarily what it actually sounds like. Yeah, totally. One of the great uh, projects for me in music has always been that my brain stops doing all that stuff, thinking about the gardening. Not that I, my mind thinks about gardening very often, but that it doesn't do that when I'm playing music. And I think that's why it's very much a different... It's thinking, obviously, yes, but it's it's not. There's no time for that um, for some that sort of 
I wonder what's, uh, you know, I wonder how, I wonder if I'll make the house payment this week, or any of that sort of stuff. It's just like, it's too much going on for anything else like that to, you hope to so. happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's what it's like for me. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a lovely thought. And, you know, you, as an audience member, even you can have that experience listening to music. Um, and I certainly did tonight with all those three sets. Uh, that's my segue. <laughs> Pretty <nice>. good. <laughs> Thank you for sharing those thoughts, for uh, thinking so well about that question, because I think it's a really interesting one, and I love hearing the range of people's responses to it. Um, and thank you again for your music. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. This is The Jazz Social, and don't forget, next week, um, Tim Jago and Troy Roberts, Steve Grant, and Raphael Carlin joining us. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to support the musicians by donating to our PayPal if you haven't already. See you next week. <laughs>